Hi crafty folks! Today we are going to do ruffles and volume. I have three techniques. I have three techniques to show you, each of which are good in their own way and require little to no extra equipment. These ruffle techniques are great with organza and tool. You can also use them for other such lightweight fabrics like uh, silk charmeuse or lightweight georgettes and chiffons. Here's a detailed description of what you'll need. This is the simplest way to gather fabric and requires no extra equipment beyond a sewing machine. You want to leave yourself enough seam allowance on the side to be able to have your finger fit. From here, you will place your fingers on either side of your machine foot and push the fabric into a gather as you sew over it. This will require some practice if you are not an efficient sewer, but I guarantee you, you will have ruffles in no time. The hand gathering technique works best if you use one to two layers of fabric. Because of the differential feed of your top sewing foot and the bottom foot, sometimes the under fabric will slide either slowly or more quickly than the top. So keeping it at two layers is best. But if you wanna add more volume, all you do is start stacking the gathered layers you've done. Lastly, after you've sewn together as many layers as you like, you are going to want to clip away the excess seam allowance. It looks nice and leaves you with a cleaner edge. Next, we have our gather foot technique. Sometimes machinery and tools are there to make our job a little bit easier. Machine feet, like a gather foot, are typically a specialty order item based on the type of machine you have. Refer to your manual for your machine or use good old Google to see where you can purchase one. A gather foot does what hand gathering does. So it's quite easy to use. You essentially just sit back and drive. I have noticed, and this might be my gather foot alone, that it does not have as tight of a gather as I would like. That being said, I do believe you can adjust your foot. I have not been able to on mine, but I haven't tried that hard. You'll see me here putting my fingers behind the foot and holding the gathers as they stitch. I've noticed that that makes the gather tighter. I don't know if that's called a sewing hack or not, but I've noticed it works. I'm sure if I just tried to adjust my foot, it would do the same thing. <laughs> Sometimes I like to make things harder for myself, I guess. Using your gather foot for tool is awesome. Because tool is so thin, it gathers it really well. This is one layer of tool, and it's a pretty tight gather, which is very satisfying. This is what the gather looks like on two layers of tool. It works pretty great with two layers and doesn't seem to have any issues with the amount that it's gathering. This is demonstrating sewing with a gather foot through four layers of tulle. As you can see, it's not gathering as tight as it was. So sometimes less is more. Okay, here's the most awesome technique. This will require a machine that zigzags. 
you will be zigzagging over the dental floss or button thread and pulling it as your machine sews. The great thing about this technique is you can use quite a few layers of tool and organza at once. One very important point of note regarding this technique is you must secure and tie off your dental floss or button thread before you start sewing and pulling that thread. You can grab the end of it along with the two threads from your machine, loop it around your finger and tie it in a knot, or you could even thread it through a button and tie it off very securely. Essentially, you're going to want this to not budge once you start pulling on it. If it comes undone and slides through the zigzag, you're going to lose all of your work. So save yourself from that pit of despair by tying it off securely. Here you can see I'm pulling some slack and I'm going to proceed to grab the other two threads from the machine, loop it around my finger, pull it through and create a secure knot. Unfortunately, my hand is in the way here, which I didn't realize until I uploaded this video. So I apologize for that, but I will aid you by showing you a picture right now. Grab all three available ends, loop them together, and tie them like this. Now we're at the fun part. All you do is zigzag over that thread and pull it as you go. It's super easy. It's time consuming, but it's highly effective. You want to make sure to avoid stitching through that thread because it will stop you from being able to pull the thread any further, but it's pretty easy to avoid it. Here's a jaunty tune while the rest of this footage plays out. ruffles regardless of what type of machinery you have and if you have the proper foot. Some of you may be wondering, well how do I attach these to my garments given whichever technique I used? As an example, here is a bustle I made. This is two layers of tool sewn with the gather foot at a time. I sewed the bolt as it was unraveling at the fold of the bolt that way the ends of this would be open. When I attached it, I created a panel piece that was the shape I desired, and then you stitch it in in rows, preferably starting from the bottom and going up so you can layer and layer and layer and layer. It is time consuming, it's a bit fussy, but in the end it's really worth it because you have something nice and fluffy. Another technique you can use involving the dental floss technique Let's say you wanna add volume underneath the skirt, super easy. What you wanna do is take the measurement of the circumference of the item that you're wishing to add volume to and make it as long as the dental floss. Make sure to leave quite a few inches on either side so that you can tie it off properly. You can even you know, give yourself the four inches to tie off and use a little permanent marker mark if you want an extremely accurate amount of rufflage in there. So if you're making something that's fitted at the waist with lots of puff coming out from that part, you just wanna take this, measure it around, end to end, and then you just wanna add as many inches here and then double that so that you know you have it on either side. This is the circumference amount that I want to be able to gather into. Let's see if it works. And it does, and that leaves me a good four to five inches of room on either end to tie off. With this technique, you can layer quite a few layers and sew them all at once. The more layers of fabric that you use can be a little bit more difficult, but the nice thing about this technique is that everything is gathering at once. I find with tool, you can go up to eight layers and it's pretty fantastic. And the general rule of tool is, this is one yard of tool, four layers strong, and it squishes down to about three inches. Again, that's at four layers. If you have one layer, it'll probably be 
a little bit less than three inches. If you've used the zigzag technique, you're gonna end up with a lot of gathers with a big fat edge. So how do you attach that to your garment? Because oftentimes it becomes so thick that it's really hard to run through a sewing machine. Well, if you wanted a lot of volume, you can do this technique and layer it on top of each other. But this is when you take your dental floss and a needle and you're gonna stitch it all together with that dental floss and then you just stitch it inside of your garment. It's the way it is. <laughs> you can also get super tricky and stitch a separating zipper to one edge of it and sew that onto the inside edge too so that when you're traveling, you can unzip the fluff and squish it into a tube lengthwise so that it doesn't wrinkle and fold your dress in your suitcase. I know, right? Helpful travel tips because we all love these big, beautiful garments, but Lord knows traveling with them can be such a pain in the ass, right? Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful. Stay tuned. In the next few weeks, I'm going to be launching my first exclusive tutorial, how to make a feather headdress that comes apart for easy travel. Holy shit. I'm so excited. It's going to take me a while to edit it, so please be patient, but I hope you tune in to watch that one as well. That will be a $15 and over Patreon subscriber, or you can pay a one-time $25 fee to access the video. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye.